All engines running. Launch commit. Lift off. We have lift off 49 minutes past the hour. Apollo 10 was the mission grand rehearsal before the Apollo 11 landing and the first time the LEM was flown in moon orbit with astronauts Gene Cernan and Tom Stafford on board. The LEM, nicknamed Snoopy, separating from the command module, flying for the first time around the moon and lowered its orbit all the way to just before starting P-63, the landing phase. And just to be sure that the intrepid astronauts wouldn't be tempted to land, NASA chose not to give them enough fuel for that maneuver. Instead, the LEM ascent stage was scheduled to separate from the descent stage and start a burn back to the command module. But it did not all work according to plan and created a big scare when the attitude control system failed and started to send the LEM into a spin, which was a very bad position to start a burn from. Here is the footage of the scary moment as the ascent stage jettisons the landing stage. You can see the ascent stage spinning out of control with the now separated descent stage legs flashing by the window. Fortunately, the astronauts recover very quickly and are able to perform their burns back to the command module. But if you listen to the astronauts' recollection, you can tell that that brief moment felt like an eternity for them. After the astronauts were safely back in the command module, the ascent stage was jettisoned and in a one-of-a-kind experiment, its engines were fired to depletion, which ended up putting it in a sun orbit, more or less forever. Recently, amateur astronomers claim to have spotted it with a fairly good certainty. Sadly, the Apollo LEM software from this historical mission has been lost to history, its only known version currently locked in Snoopy, patiently circling the sun. But wait, there is hope. Recently, our rocketman Mike Stewart was able to acquire two original Apollo source code listings from an auction. We covered the first listing from Apollo 12 in a previous episode. But it turns out the second listing is a development version of the Apollo 10 LEM software that predates the actual flown software. And Mike thought maybe it would be possible to recreate the actual flown software from this older version. That code recovery is a pretty convoluted and brainy hack that deserves its own episode. But for now, we'll start with a shorter and easier episode, looking at the listing and some of its most delightful comments. And we have a second one. Yep, this is Luminary 69. Mm. Uh, almost, but not quite the version that flew on Apollo 10. Um, what flew on 10 was Luminary 69 revision 2. The, the reason for the, the two revision numbers mm -hmm. is that uh, Luminary 69 Revision 2 was created at roughly the same time as Luminary 95 because 69 was the one designated to fly on Apollo 10 and they didn't want to fly any of the other stuff from mm -hmm. 70 through 94. Mm -hmm. They just revised 69 to mm -hmm. have the one change that they wanted. They backported. Yep. All right. So Ooh, this one's bad. They changed the ribbon on the printer. Yeah, this this one is probably the nicest characters. <laughs> this is very nice. <laughs> of any listing uh, that we've had scanned. Mm -hmm. This has plenty of contrast. Mm -hmm. Some of the comments are hilarious. Astronaut, now look where you ended up. This is uh, P-68, this, this is one of Dawn's. Uh, oh yeah, P sixty eight is a uh, landing confirmation. Right. Exactly. Okay, we've we've ended up somewhere. Don Isles is one of the famed programmers of the AGC, whom we met last year at MIT, and is seen here with the bunch of programmers responsible for the famous Apollo fourteen abort workaround hack that saved the mission. He is a very highly educated and colorful character with many interests besides Apollo programming. And if you have only one book to read from an Apollo engineer, we highly recommend his. So th this, this, is, this is a Don Isles comment. They were just yeah. they're absolutely <laughs> hilarious. There's, um, <laughs> uh, the lunar landing, this section has... Yeah, it's, it's the previous, uh, previous page there. Is um, getting the landing radar into the correct position. Bra so branch, if antenna already in position. Please crank 
the silly thing around. <laughs> Astronaut, please crank the silly thing around. And then Terminator proceed and see if he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> So the silly thing that Don wants the astronauts to crank around is the landing radar bolted to the bottom of the LEM, but which can be tilted in two different positions. In the early start of the landing on P63, you are mostly on your back, so you want the landing radar tilted like so. As soon as you are in P64, you pitch towards a vertical orientation and want the radar pointing down and P63 won't let you start unless you have the radar in the correct position. This is a piece of code that pops an error code if the radar is not in the correct position. Uh, we'll double check by reading the tilt sensor and not let you go any further if you are lying about it, as he jokingly refers to. And off to see the wizard refers to the descent engine lighting routine, which will start the deorbit and landing. And which is actually called Burn Baby. <laughs> it's just Greek commenting. <laughs> and let's not forget Burn Baby. Ignition routine, yeah. Ignition routine. That's uh, off to see the wizard. It's going to be somewhere around here. I don't remember if it's the fuck recording. Yeah, Burn Baby, Burn, Master Ignition Routine. You have to see the wizard. And for our non-American viewers, Off to see the Wizard refers to the delightful 1939 film The Wizard of Oz, a staple of American culture. And Burn Baby Burn is much less joyous as it refers to the slogan used during the violent Los Angeles Watts riots in 1965, but quite a pointed name for a dangerous ignition routine. Burn, baby, burn! Master ignition routine. I have any idea what that says. <laughs> On y soit qui mal y pense. Um, yes, be hated the guy that doesn't think it's right. I should know that in French, right? <laughs> I don't. So, which, which reference? On y soit qui mal y pense. Um, so, so. Th that was like English Knights. It's like dishonor on those who think bad of us. Yes. And Much better translation. I'm, I'm not sure which so it, 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 ship it was, but it was... Okay, so that, yeah. that then is, is following up on this ignition routine was conceived and executed and is maintained by Peter Adler and Don Isles. <laughs> so there was, it was the knights, and, <laughs> and the knights had supreme rights. <laughs> <laughs> the British Order of the Garter. The British Order of the Garter, and, and okay, and they had the French saying, all right, what does no need say tangere? It means, basically oh, yeah. means don't touch me. Uh -huh. It should be like, don't touch these values, they're supposed to be constant. Jeez, uh. I had to look that one up. Noli se tangere is a play on noli me tangere, coming from the Bible, don't touch me, which is what Jesus is supposed to have said to Mary after his resurrection. Here the Latin is transformed to mean, don't touch these. Because, of course, these um, parameters are constants and they didn't have the const keyword to protect them from programming mischief. So they resorted to warning in Latin instead, I guess. They are, okay, they are constants. Yeah, it's, it's a table of, of things that change depending on what program you're in. So there's like the P12 table, P40 table, P41 table, P42 table, P63 table. Oh, they really... If you touch them, that would be bad. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Was there a big fight into uh, getting those at the auction? Uh, for Apollo 12, yeah. Uh, mm. For this one, actually, not really. This, this one... Mm -hmm. Finished a lot earlier than I was expecting. Mm -hmm. Because it didn't land, or I guess so. Right. And where was the Apollo Eleven? Also, that one went for more than twice as much as I think both of these combined. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so lots of fight for the for yeah. the famous flight. Yep. And you don't know who got it, but no idea. I bet you nobody that can actually read it like you and recompile it like you and <laughs> use it to <laughs> to recover software that was completely lost. I'm so glad you got them. Money well spent, my friend. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so 69 Revision 2 has been sort of lost to history. Uh-huh. But um, you were using this to... listing and, and then a whole bunch of other things that I can show you, we uh -huh. were able to put it back together. <laughs> That's amazing what you guys are doing.